Welcome back. We're going to talk about the index of hydrogen deficiency. What the IHD or index of hydrogen deficiency tells you about is how unsaturated your organic molecule is. And technically speaking, what this represents is how many less hydrogens does your organic molecule contain when you compare it to the corresponding alkane. Now there's a formula that we use to determine the value of uh, hydrogen deficiency and it's given by the formula right here. Now what you can see here, the 2n plus 2, this is simply the formula for uh, your typical alkanes, alkanes that are not cyclic. And technically speaking, this is just telling you how many hydrogens you can have max per given amount of carbon. So the value of n right here is um, equal to the number of carbons present in your molecule. And then your equivalent hydrogens are the number of hydrogens that your actual formula possesses. So if you do have hydrogens, you count them. But if your formula also contains halogens, you will count them as well as if they were hydrogens. Um, now, if your formula contains oxygen or sulfur, you simply ignore those atoms in terms of the hydrogen count. Uh, but if you do have nitrogen or phosphorus, you will subtract one hydrogen from the total for every nitrogen or phosphorus that your molecule contains. And at the end, you divide the whole subtraction by two to give you the value of the IHD. So for instance, if we're looking at C4H10, which is butane, we know that we have four carbons, so enter that into the formula, two times four is eight, plus two is 10. So that's where we get this 10 from. But the formula itself contains 10 hydrogen, so we're gonna subtract that from the two and plus two value, which will give us ultimately zero. Now, when you look at cyclic alkanes, the story is a little bit different because if you count the number of hydrogens, here we only have eight hydrogens, even though we have four carbons. So here the formula is gonna change a little bit, uh, because of four carbons, 2n plus 2 is still equal to 10, but now we only have 8 hydrogens. So 10 minus 8 is going to equal 2. Divide that by 2, and this tells you that the IHD is equal to 1. And kind of similarly, if you look at an alkene, like 1-butene, the number of hydrogens is also down to 8, which means that the IHD of the alkene will be equal to 1. So what the IHD is in essence telling us is the possibilities for the structural features of the molecule. Uh, if the IHD ends up being zero, what this is telling you is that your alkane will contain no multiple bonds and uh, they will be no rings either. However, if the IHD equals one, then you could either have a double bond in your structure or you could have one ring. When you look at triple bonds, you find out that the total number of hydrogens decreases a bit more. And so by the time you calculate the IHD formula, four carbons means that the two N plus two is equal to 10 minus the six hydrogens that you actually have in this alkyne, uh, ultimately give you an IHD value equal to two. So an IHD of two can be representative of having one triple bond. But here is the extra feature associated with this, the IHD values are additive. So if you have, for instance, two double bonds in your molecule, then you have a total of two IHDs, one for every one double bond. So the more complete version of this table is as follows. IHD of zero, no multiple bonds, no rings. IHD of one, you either have one double bond or one ring, but not both. If you have an IHD of two, you could have a triple bond and that will account automatically for an IHD of two. Or you could make up that value by having two double bonds or having two rings or having one double bond plus one ring in your structure. So any of these possibilities will give you an IHD of two. And then there is another one that I want you to be aware of and that's when you get an IHD of equal or greater than four. If it is equal to four, it is very possible that your molecule contains a benzene ring. Uh, and of course, if it is greater than four, what that means is that you, you have a benzene ring, but then there'll be something else, maybe like a carbonyl will be present, or maybe an additional ring is gonna be present. But um, reaching values of four are typically representative of benzene because benzene is a, a ring structure, which has an IHD of one, 
but then you have three double bonds and each one of them contains an IHD of one. So all together, they give you an IHD of four. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this is a possibility. It's not a guarantee just because the IHD is equal to four or greater than you're gonna have a benzene ring, but it is a, a pretty good probability. So let me show you an example of um, one isomer and, and then I'll show you a few more in future videos. Um, but we're gonna go from the beginning. We're gonna look at the mass spec and we'll use the mass spec to determine the chemical formula of the molecule. And once we have the molecular formula, we'll use the IHD to come up with different isomers. So notice right here that we have a value at 72 grams per mole. This is the mass per charge ratio. And then we have a smaller peak at 73. And notice the percentages. At 72, we have 17.8%. Uh, 73 is 0.98. And the idea is that you want the value that is one higher for the mass to be lower in percentage. And um, as long as you are the farthest out or the, far, the highest in the x-axis, you're probably looking at the M plus peak. All right, so 72 will be the M plus peak, 73 will be the M plus plus one peak. Now, the rest of the stuff is what we call fragmentation patterns. Uh, this is when the molecule, uh, when you create the cation, typically the cation is actually a radical cation which ends up chopping itself off. And then the fragments that result from that you know, self-mutilation um, is what you see here as lower values for masses. So they can actually tell you whether you have ethyl groups, methyl groups, etc., just by looking at the difference in masses. But that's a topic that we'll save perhaps for uh, a more advanced lecture. Right now we're just going to focus on the M plus and then the M plus plus one peaks. All right, so first thing to notice, um, M plus peak is an even number, meaning that we have an even number of nitrogens uh, that could potentially be zero. But the second thing is that the percentage is not 100%, and we need to recalibrate this so that it is out of 100%. So we will divide the 17.8 by pretty much itself and multiply it by 100, and that will rescale up the M plus up to 100%. Now we need to do the same thing to the M plus plus one peak and it's completely now based on this 17.8%. So we will take the 0.98% of the M plus plus one peak and we will divide it by 17.8 times 100 to give us the new percentage. And the reason why we're dividing by 17.8 is because we want M plus to be equal to 100. So if we're gonna divide M plus by 17.8 to turn it into 100%, then we need to divide everything by 17.8. And of course, everything also gets multiplied by 100%. So once this happens, once the M plus peak is equal to 100%, now we can perform our analysis. And remember that the M plus plus one peak is the one from which we get the, car the carbon content. So we have a 5.5%. You want to divide that by 1.1%, which is characteristic of carbon-13. And this will give you pretty much a value of five, which is telling you that your molecule contains five carbons. So to figure out the hydrogens, we're gonna subtract the mass of five carbons from the mass of the M plus peak, which is 72. So we'll have 72 minus 12 times five, five because we have five carbons, 12 because that's the mass of the main isotope of carbon, carbon 12. Uh, so we're subtracting 60 from 72, which is equal to 12. So here you want to take a look at the formula and say, okay, so 12 hydrogens uh, on five carbons, is that allowed? And since the alkane can take up up to 2n plus 2 hydrogens per n carbons, uh, if you have five carbons, five times two is 10, plus two is 12, this is allowed. You are basically at the maximum. You have a full alkane in this case, not cyclic, but uh, it is an alkane. Okay, so now that brings us to the isomers. Uh, what we need to do is figure out the IHD value, and we cannot already know what's gonna be based on what I just mentioned about the fact that we have saturated the content of hydrogen in the molecule, but we'll do it nonetheless. Um, for five carbons, uh, we'll plug five for N, that'll give us 10 plus two, which is 12. And then we have actually 12 hydrogens in this formula. So we'll subtract 12 from what's going on here in the blue parentheses. 
So 12 minus 12 is going to be 0 divided by 2, it will still be 0. So this is telling us that the formulas that we can draw must contain no multiple bonds and they must contain no rings whatsoever. So one of them would be to draw the five member ring, you know, in a linear chain. So one, two, three, four, five. So pentane, pentane will do the trick. That's one of the isomers. Uh, but then what you want to do is start decreasing the content of carbon one at a time. So we can go from five carbons in a linear chain to only four. Now, you still have to have five carbons all together. So what you need to do now is branch out the fifth carbon from the middle. And whether you put the methyl group on this position where I drew it here or the position up there will give you the same molecule because of the symmetry of uh, the butane uh, parent chain. So that tells us that there's no other possibilities for having only four carbons in the parent chain. So we move down to three carbons. And that means that now we have two carbons left over that we need to account for. So we want to place them not at the ends, because if we place them at the ends, we're going to go back to the C4 or the C5 structure. Um, so that tells us that we need to place them on the middle. Now, here you have two possibilities. You could place two methyl groups on that position, or you could place one ethyl group. But if you do choose the ethyl group, that will take you back to the C4 um, analog which is not a new molecule. So you only want to place two separate methyls. And this is the only way to end up with a parent chain that's only three carbons long that still contains five carbons. Um, and this represents all the possibilities now for everything. Because if we reduce this down to two carbons, there is no way to place the three other carbons that the molecule must have without increasing the parent chain back to three or four carbons. Um, okay, so hopefully this helps you out. In the next uh, couple of videos, I'm going to show you a few more examples to kind of get the idea rolling of how to use the IHT value to give proper structures. And mind you, I didn't even look at the number of hydrogens because following this rule, no multiple bonds, no rings, guarantees that I'm going to have the correct number of hydrogens. And just to make sure that that's true, let's count them for the C4 counterpart. Uh, we have three hydrogens right here, plus two more, that's five, plus one more, that's six, plus three more, that's nine, plus another three, that's 12, and bingo, that's exactly what we want. All right, so in the next video, I will show you another example, which is a little bit more robust. So I'll see you then, bye-bye.